Good day everyone, meteorologist Mark Molnar here. How's everybody getting along with this edition of Meteor Marks Weather Eastern and Weather Northeastern? We are watching a system off the East Coast that could clip parts of Cape Cod. It is clipping parts of Cape Cod and Maine for that matter. We'll see just how much snow is going to fall out of this as it does go negatively tilted. Most of the Northeast will miss out on this one, however. And we're going to go through the next several days to actually weeks to see if we can actually get any sort of pattern breakdown here. The pattern is pretty amplified, especially out west and in the central states, but we'll see if that tr will translate to any storminess or east coast snowstorms in the medium term here. Without wasting any more time, uh, let's get into it. All right, so, you know, taking a look at this upper level flow, this is the flow 500 millibars way up in the atmosphere that we really want to focus on because this is more likely to be right than the surface map. So take a look at this. Yeah, so this system off the New England coast, it is really ramping up. But for most of you in the northeast, it's not going to be a big deal, except if you're out here on Cape Cod and parts of Maine. You know, you're going to get clipped by this up towards Nova Scotia and whatnot. But, you know, out west here, we're going to continue to deal with stormy dust. And, you know, as we go out in time here, take a look at this. Yeah, this is a big storm ejecting from the west into the central states. So definitely going to want to watch out for some severe weather come midweek here across the deep south. That propagates towards the north. I don't think this is going to be any sort of win major winter storm for the northeast. It's just going to be too warm. And I'll show you that in the particulars. But take a look at that. There's Sunday, the 22nd of January. Gets a little bit more stormy. And then we get a little interesting feature riding through the Ohio Valley into parts of the northeast. So that's definitely right around January 24th. See this time frame? We'll definitely want to watch out for that. All right. So as we take this storm in the northeast through the, at least through Sunday evening, Sunday night, Monday, let's take a look here. So yeah, you're getting some snow accumulation. Uh, Boston more likely here eventually out on Cape Cod. You know, it's rain, snow, rain, snow mix, sleet pellets mix again. But take a look at this. As we go into the overnight, 11 p.m., there it is. It's starting to ramp up across parts of Maine as well. You start out as mixed precipitation. Um, this is not going to be a major storm inland. It's going to be mainly clipping parts of Cape Cod. It's going to be really close for you, though. Look at how the rain, you know, kind of holds tough out here on Cape Cod. And look at this. Uh, quite a marginal mix of temperatures here for Maine. So you'll have a lot of sleet, nice pellets mixed in. But those winter storm warnings and winter weather advisories are in effect. This is 8 a.m. Monday morning. So looking pretty bad here. Uh, look at this. Yeah, you got uh, rain changing to snow out on parts of western Cape Cod here. Boston, you're still getting snow showers um, at this time. And you can see the morning commute looks pretty bad up here into parts of Maine. And as we continue in time, look at this. Yeah, you can see warm air starts to kind of win out a little bit as we go in time. You know, the temperatures warm up throughout the day through 5 p.m. So it becomes more of a mixed scenario. So, you know, we're marginal here for major snow accumulations. But, you know, parts of Maine could definitely see and I'll show you momentarily. And then we have the next system moving out. Let's just move it through the Ohio Valley here, Monday, 8 p.m. So this next system looks like it's going to be mostly all rain, as you can see here. And that extends down into the deep south. Now, what's happening out west here? Let's just back this up a little bit. So we go through the rest of Sunday into Monday morning here into the afternoon. There's that next system plowing into the west coast here. You can see mountain snow, valley rain continuing with these problems that we've seen, mudslides, all sorts of problems, but that's really good for the snowpack in the higher mountains. All right, as we take a look at the HRRR model, let's go in time here. Interestingly enough, it's pretty similar to the Euro here, a little bit less here in the parts of Western Maine and more so in Northern Maine here. Look at this, parts of Southeastern Massachusetts. Let's zoom in on that. All right, so here we go. Let's take a look. This is what you got going on, the HRRR model. We'll have to watch it here. Boston showing up with five inches. Look at this. So right just west of Cape Cod, that's where we're showing here six to eight inches, possibly warning criteria. We'll continue to watch it here. This is an interesting trend as we go forward. I think we're still going to say just below warning into the advisory criteria, probably most likely uh, three to six inches. All right. So taking a look at the European model here, take a look at this. So yeah, this is pretty interesting here across the Northeast. European model shows the snowfall clipping parts of the Northeast coast here, but you know, it has it moving out pretty quickly here by Monday. There it is into parts of Maine, but a lot of mixed precipitation as this system really draws some warm air in from the Atlantic. The next system here across parts of the inner mountain West, you have this system up here in the Great Lakes. It's just going to spread some light rain into the Ohio Valley into the northeast. The west is quieting down a little bit as we have a high pressure, but this system's really going to start ramping up 
and heading into the northern plains. Watch this as we go in time. We could have some snowfall really breaking out across parts of the central plains here. New low pressure forming here across the mid-Mississippi River Valley. Snow Accumulating snows here northwest of Chicago. Watch that. Our next system moving into the west. Thankfully, it is not as uh, active and as strong. So you get a little bit of a break. I hate to say it, but look at this. Into the northeast, this is for your Friday, the 20th. Yeah, it's mostly rain. You do have some snow, wet snow into northern New England. We do have try to have some secondary low development here, but for most of you in the northeast, it's going to be way too late. You can see this has been the pattern time and time again. Northern Maine does get clipped by this, however, and you have a trough of low pressure, and of course, you have some of this lake effect behind it. So you'll get some lake effect. Look at this next system diving down south across Texas, and we have another system waiting in the wings here in the Pacific Northwest, and that kind of moves in weekends, and it kind of kind of resembles a little bit of an Alberta clipper. Now, take a look at this model run of the Euro. Just take it with a grain of salt because this is Monday the 23rd. Yeah, there is an area of low pressure forming along the coastline. Some snow inland. This, unfortunately, would not give you snow, you know, right along the coast. This would be more of an inland cutter here. Parts of the Hudson Valley, Poconos, Catskills, White and Green Mountains. But this is an interesting solution. I'm not completely sold on this. This is about the time, though, that you do see that upper level trough in the 500 millibar layer that I showed you earlier in the video. So this is about that time. That's probably the most promising time I've seen so far this winter season. But as we said, don't get your hopes up because things really have to align just perfectly. And I'm not completely sold on it just yet. And look at this. Euro showing another system. But look at this. It's just showing too warm here by the 25th of January. All right, so if we take a look at total liquid precipitation, we'll take it through, there's Wednesday. So there it is into New England, mostly Cape Cod and Maine. You have the chance of seeing over an inch of liquid equivalent here. Some of that will fall as wet snow, sleet, some rain. It's just going to be a mess. Out west here, look at this. It's still a lot of precipitation. Let's get that off the screen there. But you know what? It's not as bad. Look at that. Northern California, less than a half an inch. That's great. Now, the Sierra Nevadas here, central Sierra Nevadas, you're going to still see rain. Uh, parts of San Francisco down to L.A. So you'll continue to get some of these heavy rains and mudslides. Look at this here in Arizona, though. Yeah, you're getting upwards of two, two and a half inches of liquid equivalent. All right, so as we take a look at total snow accumulations, we'll just take it through midweek here Wednesday. So, yeah, there's a big snow from the central Sierra Nevadas, 20, 30, 40, 60 inches plus, and all the way to Colorado. And then we're still going to start getting snow here into the central plains. There's that snowfall in the northeast. I'll zoom on to this momentarily. European models going close to warning criteria on some of these snowfall accumulations. As we go throughout the week, it seems like the same areas just keep getting the snow. The northern central plains out here, the Rockies, Intermountain West, Sierra Nevadas, Cascades. Look at that. You're getting it on the act. And look at that. Northern New England here. Oh, let's zoom in. So here it is for the northeast over the next 24, 36 hours into 48 hours. There we go. So the European model, interesting, you know, a stripe there, western Cape Cod, southeastern Massachusetts, upwards of maybe six inches. Eh, it's going to be close, mainly advisory criteria. Here in the main parts of Maine, especially western Maine, could see upwards of warning criteria snowfall here. All right, so if we take a look at the polar vortex, I showed you last video last week. Yeah, there it is retreating. This is by Sunday the 22nd. Do we have any hope here? Well, with a position like this, it's well northeast of North America. There really isn't any hope that you're going to see any major cold air blasts in the short to medium term here. Let's just go out. There is an indicator about the 24th. That This is interesting. It's lining up with the European model. If we can get any sort of system with that associated trough, look at that. It we might materialize something here. We'll have to watch and see. Um, but look at this out west. That's uh, interesting. It's kind of indicating that there'll be some quieter weather by then, less colder air. So, yeah, that lasts along the east coast through the end of uh, January. But look at that. The polar vortex literally retreats way over here to Europe and Asia. So that's a bit puzzling. I With a position like that, going into the last week of January and February, it Look at that. You're pretty much no influence of the polar vortex. So here we go with the continental CFS model, medium range. Let's see if we got any changes going on. Really watching this closely to see, you know, there it is with the euros kind of showing right around the 23rd. GFS really isn't showing too much, but there's that maybe potential northeast, you know, 
system, coastal low, nor- nor'east or whatever you want to call it. Not highly confident too much on that just yet, but look at this. As we go in time, high pressure really builds in, and let's see. We go through the end of the month. There is some promising things for people who maybe want snow. These are kind of pinwheeling more towards the northeast, though. You start to get a little bit of the proverbial blocking up here in Greenland. Take a look at that. This is what I wanted to show you. This changed a little bit. You know, you have to be careful with this model because things can flip-flop back and forth. You don't want to just do one snapshot in time. But we'll see as we go through February if this is going to become a trend. Look at this big trough. That's a mega trough. If that pans out, you know, if that's going to trend. But look how quickly it's replaced by a ridge. So my confidence right now for a total pattern blowout here isn't high. But look at that. This is promising for people who want snow. Let's just back that up to the 11th of February. But see, the problem with this is, look how fast moving this does seem. And then by the mid-February here, the 16th, you don't have any blocking up here in Greenland. And look what you have. You have, star you have ridging starting. And you start to have this trough here in the Gulf of Alaska, which is kind of hinting that we might go back to this trough out west. So we'll watch it here. There's some interesting indicators. Models are having a little bit of a tough time with this, however. All right. Hello to my Caribbean friends, Central American friends, all you out here in the islands and parts of Latin America. Take a look at this. So look at your beautiful weather down here as we go cruising throughout the week. Oh, wow. You are looking A-OK. -okay. This is a beautiful time of year. You can see not very many showers or thunderstorms to be had as we go through the rest of the month beautiful times get out there and enjoy all right so getting out here into the western pacific let's take a look at what we got going on you know it's been drying out here in the philippines very nicely over towards parts of vietnam you have a few showers in the north there but look at this yeah it's by tuesday the 17th we got this little feature riding just east of the northern philippines here and take a look at this as we go out in time here that kind of just sits off the coast and fizzles. That's great news because look at this. This is one of the driest weeks you'll see here in the Philippines until we get to, you guessed it, you know, the first weekend here of Lunar New Year. Look at that. Yeah, we have a big old tropical wave here. So, you know, this is going to hold off, you know, till Sunday. So if you got, you know, Saturday evening, any of those Lunar New Year plans, definitely get out there and enjoy. But look at this. Yeah, I'm a little concerned about this because see how this just rolls right into Central Philippines by 10 p.m. Sunday, the 22nd. So please stay tuned because I think this has the potential possibly to become a named system. Don't think it'll become a typhoon. It'll make landfall pretty quick and then it becomes absorbed. So still, even if it doesn't become a named system, it'd still be a formidable flood maker here, which I'm concerned. And look at this next system by the 26th of January. I'm very concerned with this. Look how it just pummels right into the central Philippines. It definitely looks tropical in nature. It looks like it has quite a circulation and it has a lot of moisture here behind it feeding into it. So if you're in the central Philippines or the Philippines for that matter this week, take a look at that. I'm a bit concerned. It does kind of move off towards the South China Sea in the general direction of Vietnam or South China. But look at that. It kind of gets caught up in the westerlies. You can see where the frontal boundary is. It's riding pretty far to the north. So we're going to see some interesting weather. And then look at this. Southern Philippines, this is by Sunday, the 29th of January, getting pretty far out, but it looks like you're going to see a drying trend again, look at that, by the end of January. And taking a look at John's photo, sent in a beautiful sunset this past Friday, take a look at that, beautiful oranges, you can see some pinks there in the front and then in the back, all those reds and oranges, a very nice capture there, John. It's a beautiful time of year to get some sunset photos as the sun is so low in the sky. Nice capture. All right, so as we take a look at temperatures, let's go throughout the week here. Look at this warmth across Texas. The only cold areas literally are the Intermountain West, Northern Plains, and parts of Northern New England. This is really unprecedented. It just reminds you so much of previous winters where we didn't see too much of a winter. There is some cold air kind of waiting in the wings here. It's trying to move southeastward, but look at this here across the Northeast for Tuesday. 40 soaring up into parts of the northeast. It's just going to be another above average week here. Look at this. The only cold areas are these two areas of the U.S. as we head into Wednesday. And here's Thursday. Look at this. Look at the 60 degree line all the way up to the Mason-Dixon line here. Yeah, you have some, if you can call that cold for this time of year, it really isn't. And then we get into Friday. We start to get some cold air building here. You start to see a trend. 
But look at this, the 40 degree line still hovering throughout parts of the Ohio Valley. Look at into next weekend, Saturday. You're looking at another warm weekend across parts of the Northeast, lower 40s on average. Yeah, there's not much move in this cold air. A extended outlook from hometown viewers, Binghamton to Scranton's upper Susquehanna River Valley. Look at this, Monday through Friday, sunny Monday, cold start, 12. But look at that, warm up to 42, 41, 44 for Wednesday. Yeah, rain showers Tuesday, maybe starting out of sleet and wet snow, but quickly changing to rain Thursday. Look at that, rain as well, especially in the afternoon. Friday, a chance of rain and snow showers. But look at that, every day we're making it to 40 or better. Where is winter? Thanks for joining me for this edition of Media Mark's Weather Northeastern and Weather Eastern. Don't forget Facebook Media Mark, Weather Northeastern. Also, Hurricane Northeastern at Susquehanna Weather for my local page. And guess what? MediaMark.com, WeatherNortheastern.com is Twitter at Weather Eastern. Don't forget, question or comment down below. Smash that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell button, share the video, and thanks for joining me.